so welcome everybody. As I mentioned, uh, this is a continuation of the discussion started last year for the uh, GNU advocacy. And uh, I don't particularly have a presentation uh, or, or more details. Uh, I will say that I'm continuing to manage, uh, along with Sidesh, the uh, social media activity, uh, Twitter, for example. Uh, the GNU tools now has over 6,000 followers, and we're getting uh, you know really good in, uh, interaction, getting some you know bug reports, comments uh, through there as well. So there are people that are definitely engaged and uh, happy to learn about it. Again, seeing the the vibrancy of the community, uh, this is meant as a an interactive discussion again. Uh, and uh, last year we published uh, based on the the initial work of uh, myself and Kate Stewart and, uh, and Margaret. The, uh, the paper uh, through the Linux Foundation about uh, the GNU tools and, and GCC, which was very well received. Um, and we're looking to probably try to write uh, another article again this year. We just started brainstorming it. Uh, but again, the, the issue is um, to, to brainstorm with everybody here ideas. I mean, one of the things that we were trying to, to start last year uh, was for other people to write uh, articles uh, about their own experience in GCC to make uh, GCC and the GNU tool, bin utils, everything more accessible, more approachable, um, and to reach out to their own communities. They're, they have different constituencies. People are more involved with the embedded market, with the server market, with cloud, with uh, startups, um, and so people being able to speak about it, their own experience and um, their own work with different aspects of the tool chain to help uh, communicate that more broadly. I mean, and there has been less, uh, you know, less activity in that area than, than, than we had hoped. There's been were some uh, glitches. I think some people had, had hoped to work on that and for various uh, corporate reasons or other reasons weren't able to continue that. So uh, I guess sort of one question out to you is, uh, to the audience is how uh, it, you know, how, how do you try to uh, resurrect that, that idea? If anybody has, uh, has any ideas, any, uh, I mean, how, or, you know, people's ideas, how, how, can, how can people hear, or are there other areas that the, the community would like to, uh, I mean, think would be useful for uh, improving the, uh, the, the, the general Linux, open source, free software communities, you know, knowledge and, and you know, positive attitude towards uh, the GNU tool chain. So, yeah. Martin, yeah. So, should we perhaps try to have a track at FOSDEM? Um, mostly with the aim to tell users, hey, there are these new, newly mature things like LTO, with, especially with conjunction with PGO, can really help you a lot. Come and use it. Look how it is useful. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, there. I mean, yes. It's a question against who. <laughs> I know that there was someone trying to do that in the past, a long time ago, and that, that we were basically refused because the GNU tool chain is too big. Uh, that was the reason that I've heard. So I, I, was, I was wondering whether there was an, actually anyone with, with who, who tried to organize that in the I past. I thought there was some discussion for this year. I mean, there is the GNU. Uh, I mean, the FSFs. Um, I have a booth or a box, I mean, that, that they participate in maybe having a, a, a talk during their session. I organized the GNU track enforcement once, and they accepted it. Okay, so. Oh. I was saying that I organized a GNU, general GNU track enforcement, <coughs> like uh, six, seven years ago. And um, I think I can. I can volunteer to try to do a GNU okay. Chain one this year. I mean, we lo we lose nothing, you know, like submitting an application. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that that's it's, it's that sort of uh, thing. I mean, I'm not just trying to you know ask. I mean, y yes, volunteer. But w what would people? I mean, not just what are ideas to do, but what are, what are what are people here able to do? I mean, it's a matter of not you know just oh this would be good and somebody else does it, but yes, is. Comment. Um, so, uh, 
you're talking about uh, promoting to other people who are already in the free and open source community and um, I think um, well maybe broadening our scopes a little bit um, to expand that community overall like so in terms of what what each of us can do individually for example um, like I'm actually not much of a programmer myself I'm primarily a political activist I'm here um, because I support the political goal of free software overall and um, I think um, you know by letting more people know about the benefits of free software um, like that that might be more of a thing to um, include besides like just the technical aspects of right. like people who already know what Linux or whatever is. Right, exactly. I and mean, I think that that's, I, I believe what, what we accomplished with the article uh, last year, which was to, I mean, through, I think it was published on opensource.com of the um, making the, or helping um, end users, I mean corporate end users, to become more aware of GCC exists, what its benefits are, how people should utilize it. I mean, what is being utilized for what, what its successes are, so that people keep that in mind. Um, but as we well, um, and not not just corporate end users, um, like you know, there's people who are not in corporations, yeah. for example, like. Um, Promotion to governments, for example, mm -hmm. or would be another one. Yeah, okay, so. Um, at, at the risk of something that does need a lot of, requires a lot of work, I think we are desperately short on tutorial material. Yep. Now, I have written some. If you go and look at the how to port G <coughs> GDB, that was written by me, but it was 10 years ago and I haven't got round to updating it. We, I did try last year with the CGen tutorial, and it was interesting to see how much follow-up I've had from that about CGen, even though it's a bit of a niche interest. Um, the real problem is when people say, how do I learn about GCC? Yes. And to be honest, the best material out there is probably the IIT course. Yes. And that's, what, 15 years old now? It's not terribly up to date. Yes. The challenge is that producing really good tutorial materials is really hard work. This is not something I'll do it in my weekends in the spare time. This is, I need peace and quiet for weeks or months to well, write this. Yeah. And that well, may the, be a place to look at investing some of that sponsorship. Yeah, there, actually, there actually is the uh, Google, I forget it was like Spring of Document, there was some documentation project that they were actually paying uh, document writers to pair up with this, and, and I actually applied, but honestly, the, the problem that we had was that nobody in the GCC community was willing to be the technical mentor for the document writer. I, I, so I like, would, maybe we can try for again next year, is there anybody here you know, who's willing to, I mean, I mean, one specific area is Gimple, I mean, where we have relatively, I mean, not separate from, from tutorials, I mean, which, but I agree, I mean, is there anybody here who would be willing to be a technical mentor for Gimple, for a, a person who excels at, at documentation writing but isn't necessarily a, an ex expert on GCC Gimple internals and could help partner with that person to write better documentation? Don't all run forward at once. Can, can I give a caution on that, and um, which is, the hard bit is not the documentation. The documenter, there are people can guide you. All the hard work is in the technical side. It's putting together those examples, making mm. sure all the bits of examples. The technical writer will spot that you're missing a gap in your example and it doesn't flow nicely. But the hard work is actually creating a constructive, and that needs an, en that needs an engineer who works on this day in, day out and that, yeah. that is the challenge so well but, and, and part of it is sort of related to what Jeff was mentioning up here and all was mentioning that there and, and Carlos as well that we have 
you know, a, a limited set of reviewers, even for patches, and it's those same people who are experts in technology. There's only so many ways that we can divide or spread out the, the, the technical expertise that we have. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, I, would, I would look at taking some oh, and, of and again, thanks very much for your excellent work on, on the CGN and the GDB tutorials. I mean, yeah, it's greatly appreciated. I, what I would say is I would look at some of the students that we have here and whether those funds can be used to hire them, mm -hmm. you know, to take an internship with the GCC team for a summer mm -hmm. to write that document because it's probably a summer's work for a top flight PhD student paired with a technical author to help mm -hmm. them. But the hard work is the you know, PhD student. But, but again, is there anybody here who either they themselves can volunteer or know, or not just, oh, this person, I mean, who, who can help um, twist the arm of the appropriate person, I mean, uh, and on their technical team to be that uh, technical mentor for this project? I mean, for the documentation and tutorial project? Okay, so I guess that won't be done. I mean, <laughs> yeah, James, or? That was not volunteering. Um, <laughs> I wonder if there's an interesting question as to why there's no volunteering. So for me, thinking about the question, uh, I don't think I would have the technical knowledge to cover all of Gimple or even start getting covered all Everybody who has imposter syndrome, raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, it, it makes it quite tough, right? How do you volunteer to document a part of the compiler that is several hundred passes, very confusing? You probably, when I write code for Gimple, I kind of find my way through and hope for the best, and then Richie tells me I'm wrong, and then I find my way through again, and then I'm still wrong, so I do it a third time, and I finally get there. I can't sit and write documentation for that. And I wonder whether that's a problem that others are facing, and that's why they're well, not coming forward. But, but, but in some ways, I mean, I, I guess, I, I, I'm, I'm sure they're seeing that. I mean, but that immediately comes to mind of when you and, and all of us go through that experience that we don't add just a little bit of documentation at that time. Oh, I was working on this and I learned through these three iterations and the guidance from Richie and Jakob and, and everybody else, this is the right way to do it. And let me now not just document it for myself or my team, but you know, put a paragraph somewhere in a wiki, somewhere in, in the GC documentation, saying, okay, this is what I learned about the right way to do this. And then if everybody, you know, as, as we're slowly working our way through it, then that was you know, expand out and you don't need to write the entire tome yourself. Personally, write, you know, write a paragraph. This is what I learned about the right way to approach this thing, or this is, and here's the little, you know, and maybe another paragraph, as, as Jeremy was saying, you know, this is the little example code or I sort of, you know, shrunk this down as to what I was actually doing. Here's a tutorial of what I, and you know, the right way to do this that I learned after the three iterations. Is it possible for people, can, can people make the effort, try to do that? Or even recording the URL of the patch thread, you know. Well, but, but that's, I mean, yes, you can, but that's, that's less, I mean, the point, the problem I, I think, I mean, maybe Jeremy will correct me, but I think that part of the problem with that is then the person that needs to, you know, instead of getting a concise answer, I mean, I mean, this, this, you know, if you go to, to, you know, some search engine, type in and say, well, here is the, the entire, you know, uh, academic article and the, you know, bouncing back and forth with the viewers of why their paper was rejected for 10 years, and then you distill out from that why, you know, yeah. why, you know why, 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 you know, the civilization fell in 1177, right. you know, yeah. that's But it, it might be better than nothing that it, 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 to at least know about it. But um, I have a di somewhat different problem in that I oftentimes deal with trailing edge stuff. I, I program in Arduinos and Teensies and all that kind of stuff, and they use an ARM compiler from like GCC6 or GCC7 that was provided by Mentor Graphics and you know the tool and the people on the Linux distributions also that just get a random um, Debian from four years ago or Darwin on PowerPC. You know we have a lot of these people that there's no real obvious way that they can get new new stuff, and I don't know how to how to solve it other than saying. Sorry, I can't help you. 
And uh, about uh, starting of GC development, uh, we have the exact same situation uh, that was described about attempts, failures, and attempts again. And uh, we just couldn't find the like newbie developer quick start to yep. GCC debug. GCC has really great uh, debug support for GDB like dump, dump micros and so on and so forth, but there is no single place which we can uh, show to new developers. So yeah, we have some internal documentation. So uh, when you stuck upon uh, something, please check this dump tree macros, check these yeah. debug builds. Uh, but I don't even know if we can submit it to GC documentation project because uh, GC internal documentation is uh, like a tome. Uh, it's great, uh, but it's about GCC internals, not how to work with that. Right, right, right. But, but, but one also can, I mean, the, the website itself is in, I guess that's, is that been switched to, I guess that's still a CVS repository, that's the, our last CVS repository. Um, and we're, we're going to revert back to just Emacs change files, so uh, or, or SCCS or something. So, so I mean, one can change that. I mean, we can add more documentation. And Carlos and I, I mean, need to try, uh, O'Donnell and I need to talk over this weekend. But we're you know trying to work on actually improve redoing the website um, and and updating that. But but again, it's a matter of yes, we can make the the website beautiful, but it needs the content. So part of this is again. You know, if you have this idea, if you, you know, this is where we started and this is what we, you know, we, you know, uh, you know, keep, you know, hitting walls and tripping over things and we eventually worked it out. If people can, um, you know, not, not, not summarize the painful experience, but can try to take that, you know, the experience they learned and, you know, take, you know, an hour or two and just sort of write up this is, you know, if we had known from the beginning, this is what we should have done or this is the, the fast way so that you avoid all these problems and then, we can either put that in the wiki or we could put that on the website. And I know that that's part of the confusion is that we have a wiki and a website. They aren't up to date. But, well, you know, there are places to at least hang the information. A really big problem with the website is that most of it isn't indexed by Google. And the stuff that is indexed yes. is put way down. Yes. So we need to, we need to fix that somehow. Yes. I mean, and, and like, part of that the is... The wiki, half of it is not indexed. The, the mailing list, nothing of it is yes. indexed. It's a problem. And yes, the I mean the documentation is put way down, and some people have mirrors of documentation of GC three dot something, and those are higher up. Yes, and part of this is because the I mean, be, because the the I mean part of this is that as at least my interpretation is that we have everything running on because of all these various hooks, everything is running on one website on one web server. And it just can't handle the load. And so there's been a lot of um, don't follow, don't index uh, issues. And right. I mean, because in some ways, these, um, these this, the search bots look very much like spammers or people who are just, you know, you know, you know uh, hitting the system with requests. And it looks like a DDoS attack. So we've both turned off uh, access, blocked access from some of the bots. Right. So yeah, it, we, it's, it, it's, we've, we're shooting ourselves in the foot for this. Yeah, so this has agree. been going on for years. And it, yes, yes. I mean, and, and that's. Routine. I mean, and, and that's part of the uh, um, that we, you know, need to to revise the way that the. I mean, that the whole site is engineered. I mean, and, and so maybe that's a use for some of that grant money. Like what? Maybe that's a use for some of that grant money you were talking about before. <laughs> well, we we're discussing that. I mean, we're discussing that honestly with the Linux Foundation as well. I mean, to I mean, the the, the whole system in. System management, system administration is just you know not not uh, keeping up with the times. But also again, you know, with a uh, a nice Z15 and 40 gig you know terabytes, we can definitely host the system a lot better. So you know, maybe we can ask Ross if he'll he'll donate a system for that. All right. So David, I, I suggest a, a two-step plan. Yep. Step one, you fix the website on the wiki so you can do this, so that people can use it and can be indexed, and there's somewhere for people to upload their experiences. And then step two, the steering committee sends out an email to reviewers saying, please encourage patch submitters to also submit an experience to this website. Can I just say, it, you can do better than that, because if I submit a patch to any of these tools, I'm expected to submit the patch to the documentation to match at the same time. 
I see no reason why the rules shouldn't be get your change log, get your code right, get your change log right, get your documentation right, and update the wiki. And so I don't know about G GDB is actually ahead of the game here because its internals manual has been on the wiki uh, in wiki format for about five years. And there's no reason why when I update the manual to say here is my new option or here is my new behavior, I can't update the in inline in internals manual to match and say here's how I've implemented it. And that could be part of the commit criteria. Well, what I'm suggesting is not a documentation update, but an experience update. This is the problems, this is what it was like for me submitting this patch. So, so that there's then a repository of people's experiences submitting patches, what they had to do, what went wrong, what worked. And then there's, now we've got a place for people to, um, to go to, to get information like that. So on the things about website not being indexed. First, I sort of suspect it's the cruel delay of robots.turks which is something like one minute, and I think there are too, simply too many messages on the mailing list and so on every day f to be able to keep up if you have a cruel delay of a minute. And I don't know if any of the people here working on the next Sourceware box have anything they can report on what the status is of the next version, more powerful box, newer version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and so on. Well, I mean, I, I guess Jeff isn't here. I mean, there is a, a, a new box which has been sitting around idle for a year, I think, or close to a year now that they're going to move on to. But, I mean, again, because of system administration and, I mean, and, but on the other hand, I mean, look, I, I mean, I should have said that during the steering committee. I mean, we should be very grateful for Red Hat providing the, the, the hosting and to some extent the administration for that box. I mean, part of this is, again, a balance and part of this is, I mean, yes, we have some funds now, but we need to be careful, I mean, at least, you know, have, have a long-term solution for this in the sense of not saying, okay, the GNU Toolchain Fund will fund this, and, you know, this is, starts eating up money, and we don't have a real, ready way to replace that, and so, you know, we end up with some sort of emergency, you know, three years in the future when we've run out of all the funds that were, you know, targeted towards hosting the box, I mean, the, or... or the co-location. I mean, that's partly uh, working with these, you know, Linux Foundation or other uh, umbrella organizations to help with the, uh, you know, this this administration to help with this this type of infrastructure, um, and what, what we want to do about that. Um, but the other question is, yes, it would be great for people to provide uh, a little tidbit for the tutorial or documentation. I mean, the question though is is would that sort of a, I mean, I guess it can be a suggestion, not a requirement, but how much is that going to discourage people from contributing to the tool chain? Because now there's yet another, could be looked at as the owner saying, I just want to fix this little bug. I need to fix this patch. I have, you know, whatever my requirement for my company is, how many more checklists and things do I need to go through to just have you accept this patch and fix this bug? If it's now that I'm, you know, fixing everything that's wrong with your community, you know, I'll just go elsewhere. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a trade-off. I mean, it's not, it's not free in terms of just, at, you know, even distributing it. Yeah, Frank? Yeah. yeah, hi there, guys. I just want to say hello. I'm uh, Frank Eigler. I'm also one of the overseers for the machine that you guys are all using. So, uh, we know well that, that uh, Google is being throttled on the machine because it has been a very, very, very bad citizen. It's been ignoring all of our attempts to throttle its use. It's been scanning things it was told not to scan. So, it's really very bad citizen, which is why we have to shut things down a lot. Now, we can revisit and we can tune. Uh, what I'd appreciate knowing is uh, send feedback, right? Uh, it's, it's news to me that the indexing uh, was this inadequate. So if, when you notice things like that, please let us know. We're a bit overseers and we'll tune things and we'll try to revisit. Yeah, because um, right, yeah, right now in the search engine, none of the, nothing is indexed from this, okay. this site. Um, I'm sure it's not nothing, but but yeah. No, no, it really is nothing. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's that's news to me. Um, but, but in general, we try to be responsive, and we and, and the machine is not so short on resources that we can't revisit these things. Um, go ahead. I don't think it's nothing. It's more like I search for something wanting to find a message, a particular message in the list archives, and instead it show, Google shows me 20 different versions of the GCC manual that refer to the relevant search terms. Yeah. 
So it seems to have indexed lots of versions of the GCC manual on the website, less good at indexing, say, the list archives and the bugs. Sure. So um, I'm very happy to receive feedback of this sort. I'm also happy to discuss maybe later on the two other machines that are going to come online this fall because we're being kicked out of the co-locations facility we are in right now. So we're having some hardware updates and stuff. Uh, but be, I don't want to spam any more, take a, more of your time. But I am available here and uh, I can talk at lunch if people are interested about the details. And please send mail to overseers when you see an actual um, usability problem like nothing's getting well, well, well I guess I mean one thing for, for Frank I mean do we I mean both Bing and Google have webmaster interfaces where one can provide I mean demonstrate that one actually owns the site and owns the domain and therefore control do we have is, is somebody taking the responsibility to actually uh, engage with the, the search console for Google? Uh, yes, I have tried. Uh, we have some, uh, some of the authentication is set up and some of those account controls are set up, but even so, the uh, getting Google to respect, for no, example. No, 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 no. I mean, but be, yeah, I mean there, there are certain things one can control with the search speed, but, there, but if you actually look at Google, it has, I think, 10 different bots now, and it specifically says for some of the bots, we ignore you. Right. So we have some interface to that, but uh, it has okay. not been satisfactory. They've also got, say, sitemap interfaces, which might help with indexing. Like, I suspect you could probably write a cron job that runs a find command to list all the pages in the list archives or something and to put those in a sitemap. And that sort of thing might well help with the indexing. Right, right. And, and that's what I was thinking just now, just taking notes. So, yeah, again, I'll, I'll sit back down now. But, yeah, we'd like to know any problems of this nature. And let's please just spam the overseers list and we'll try to get to that. I don't think the problems are unsolvable on the current hardware at all, and the new hardware should also help things. So uh, don't give up on us, just let us know the problems. Um, so on the issue of who can do um, tutorials for documentation or whatever, um, uh, well, I don't, I don't know if they're here or not, but if we're allowed to volunteer other people, um, do you know we're not? Okay. Um, well, that's, that's the whole problem. Okay. Not, though. I mean, it, it, it's not necessarily productive. I mean, if you want to suggest things, but, but it really is an issue of people volunteering others or, or expecting someone else to do it. We really need to, I mean, that's, if, if people have ideas also how to encourage others here, I'm not trying to just beat everybody up with a, a wet noodle, but part of it is we do need to, I mean, we have at least 140 people here, and this is just a fraction of the entire community. How can we get, if everybody does a little thing, as, as you know, we were discussing just recently, everybody writes, you know, one paragraph for the one thing that they discovered in whatever patch that they, lay, you know, had to get through, then we can start to build up a tutorial from that. Okay, this is how you change this patch, this is how you change that patch, you know, this is how you, you know, you know get, get this thing through. Um, and slowly provide a you know, public and, and easier access. I mean, again, maybe going in later with a technical writer, but you know, to clean it up and to make it flow better, but to provide all of these, this distributed knowledge that we have. I mean, well, it's distributed in us, it's all in Richie as one person, but you know, everybody yeah. else is distributed. <laughs> but, you know, what, it occurs to me that proceedings of the cauldron and the summit before, yeah. we, we need somebody probably just to sit down and annotate what are the, the talks, you know, the talk, various talks I've given on RTL and so forth to put them into the thing rather than having people manually scanning oh, the 2019 talks, the 2018 talks and, and so forth. It may, it may make sense, yeah. you know, because these things are somewhat more accessible. Yeah, yeah. so there's uh, Ian over here. So we have, we have actually three things, really. We have the GCC internals documentation. Now, actually, I think, if I remember correctly, that we are actually supposed to update that with a patch when we make a change to the design. It's not actually really an optional thing right now. It may not be jumped on quite as much as it should be. I, for one, I use that document. I really do. I have it open most of the time. So I very much welcome making sure that that's accurate and up to date. The second thing we have is the wiki, which is actually really quite easy to use once you've got a login on it. 
um, and the web pages, which really aren't very easy to use. But, but the, the resource that where you would put a how-to, or, you know, uh, my experience in doing X, is going to be the wiki, isn't it? You're not going to put that on the web page. But I think um, I work for a large company that has a very happy contribution process for our internal wiki, and it's just full of stuff. We have an information management problem internally within the company I work for. Once you start contributing towards a wiki and having everyone add their experiences, I think you would end up with a similar thing for the community. So we have three maintainership models across the three documentation sources that you talked about there. The wiki is kind of write once, chuck whatever you like at it, hope for the best. Um, there's the documentation, which has a more formal review process that can be quite difficult to get through. And there's the uh, web pages, which for me are, I, I have no idea how you would contribute towards those. Um, so you were mentioning uh, about the wiki um, with the keywords once you have an account for it. Um, I think one thing that might make that easier is uh, unifying the uh, Bugzilla and wiki logins, if that's possible at all. Because right, right now I have a Bugzilla account, but I haven't gone around to making a wiki account yet. But my password manager thinks that they're both the same site. So it, like, so sometimes I'll forget they're not actually the same thing and try to log in even though I don't actually have an account yet. So I, I don't know, is that something we can do? Is unify them? As far as I know, the only reason it, there's a two-step process to getting into the wiki is just to avoid the DDoS kind of <laughs> phenomena. Yeah, you just have to ask somebody who's already there. Uh, the the other reason for restricting wiki account creation is because it's been targeted by spammers mercilessly, yes. and you, we've, you had to, spam, we've had yeah. to shut it down because the wiki software has very poor anti-spam capabilities, and we've had and still do actually. If you know where to look, we have thousands of spam articles in there somewhere. <laughs> Yes, so that's the same reason why we have this man manual process where someone needs to send an email if they want to get a Bugzilla account with a Gmail address. Because we have problems with spammers creating spam bugs faster than, th faster than our scripts can use the API to delete those spam bugs. So at least GCC is still popular to someone. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's worthwhile for spammers to attack us, so we, we must be meaningful. You have a purpose in life. Uh, actually, I would like to change a bit topic uh, about advocacy. I found it's uh, very useful to go to other conferences. For example, I, I went three times to Ruby conference. And when I do some presentation, I always try to say about GCC project. How big is it? How many contributors? How many problem reports we solve? Uh, it's always interesting in comparison with all of them. It's always interesting for them. So I would encourage people to do the same for other conferences. And you, David, mentioned actually a Python conference. Maybe uh, we have uh, contributors to Python and they could say the same thing about uh, uh, GCC on Python conference. Yeah, about that. Uh, earlier you mentioned some statistics, David. I think it was in the other session. Yeah. So where did you get those figures from? Maybe they can be put on tc.new.org automatically or something. Uh, well, some of this was just looking at uh, revisions since last year or looking at uh, you know, Bugzilla entries on the, the mailing list and just tracking what, uh, what, you know, what, what, what were the ranges of numbers. <laughs> You know. ah, so that was manual work, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. and and uh, I mean some of this, and and with Git now, we can you can use count and some other operations and get to uh, to get uh, the number of uh, commits in a particular range. Um, but no, yeah, I was just looking at uh, that that we had, you know, bug numbers were about eighty-seven thousand uh, a year ago, about ninety-one, ninety-two thousand. So that's uh, that's that's how many issues have been opened and triaged. Yeah. So we just need someone to be volunteer to script that. Yep. Okay. Okay. 
many bugs have you fixed in the last month or yep. so yeah. and so on? Uh, for statistics of Git contribution, the software used for things like the reports LWN does for Linux kernel, for how, who was contributing to the Linux kernel, that's open source, but yes. it does need someone to do the mapping for domain names to companies if you want that part of the list. So I guess a, a comment I have, I, I share some of David's frustration. A lot of us have ideas of how to change the website. What's preventing us as a community from modifying the website in the way that we have talked about over the last 45 minutes? Otherwise, you're getting more of my personal stories as to why I don't do it. Well, I mean, well, clear, I mean, everybody has these invisible, you know, straps around them right now. Clearly, I mean, nobody is, you know, this is why everybody's sitting in these chairs, unable to move, because everybody's, I mean, it, it, we've, we've got these magic straps that, that's clearly prevented everybody from doing everything. No, so exactly, what, there is nothing that's preventing people from, from doing any of this, from asking these questions, from, from participating. So how... Uh, you know, how, how do we try to distribute this? So mine are, I don't understand the maintainership model for the website and how to contribute to it. If I wanted to change the design, I don't know who I talk to and I don't know how to collaborate through it. Well, well the d design is a little bit more, more different. I, mean, uh, I mean, that's mainly dealing with, with Harold, I mean, but, and, and some limitations we can do. We're, we're thinking about a more radical thing there, but there's, there's the design of the website and the, the navigation, the user interface, and there's just the information on the website. So, I mean, part of it is just... Uh, so, if I, say I wanted to add a new link on the right-hand side to my new tutorial, what's my process for doing that? So, send what patch? What well, so, so you go... Why you, is it not in Git like the rest of the stuff? How do... Where is the <laughs> contribution? Where, where, where is everything that tells me... Now, now, now you open the can of worms. Okay, Actually, documents on the website are supposed to be contributed. And can I Google for that? <laughs> and no, no, you can't. So what you do is you check out with CVS the website, then you produce a patch and send it to GCC patches. Then somebody one month later will approve it and uh, check, check it in for you. Sometimes it's much, much faster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason it's not in Git is it needs someone to do the Git version of the hooks. Yeah. Because ultimately the website any tool for converting to Git is going to produce sensible results. No, 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 no. It can't be that easy. No, the website <laughs> has a purely linear history. It doesn't have all the complicated, messy stuff how that the GCC has. How can we possibly do this without ESR's help? Well, I mean, this we, is just, the point is, oh you, my God. You, this you is just, use the Python No, version. this can't, no, it can't the, be. The well. website <laughs> is linear history. It doesn't have any of the complications at all. Just sarcasm, the, sarca I'm thinking sarcastic. Just stick it in all the map, which we've already done. I was going to say, the main the hooks. in terms of the website itself, using CVS rather than even SVN, modern Linux distro distros no longer are actually providing CVS. And so, you know, that's a, that's a problem when, when I, I have had to go to other systems sometimes to, to edit the, the web files. A purpose for AIX, finally. Okay, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be great to move that. Uh, you asked very early on, David, who's prepared to volunteer to do what? So I'm prepared to volunteer to help edit another thing for Linux like I did last year. But what are we going to say that's different from what we said last year? That's the question. You can't just produce the same article that you did. No, no, well, ago. I mean, one of the things, there was actually an interesting article, uh, um, I guess, I think it's been this past month or so on, on opensource.com that was the, the five top innovations or contributions from Linux. And so, I mean, sort of thinking that let's write up, you know, the, the five top, you know, contributions that from, from GCC. I mean, GCC's made a number of technical um, I mean, I'm not, I mean, we can probably say, you know, what is the license, but, you know, to, to, to make, uh, the, but, you know, talk about some of these other things. I mean, you do this sort of, you know, top five, top ten list and use that as a, a launching point. To again, show how, how much, not, not just it's, the GCC is this hi historical anachronism, but also how much it's really driven compiler technology. I mean, the same way that, that Linux is driven operating system technology. Okay, so 
who is going to kick that off? No, no, so, so I'm, I'm working on that with, with Margaret and Kate, if anybody else wants to contribute okay, to that. Okay, well, send me the link. I'll, I'll help like I did last year. Uh, about uh, uh, website documentation, right? Uh, the big scary thing about uh, uh, doing a patch for it is you don't know what it's going to end up as. Because you can test it on your own environment with HTML pages, whatever. And you do run it. I know, but, but if it's illegal, you do run I mean, it for the checker, right? But, but, but that, that, exactly, there's a checker there that makes sure that you aren't doing yes, anything horrible. But that's you commit. not exactly what is going to be there. No, so I understand. It's so but, scary. But, but, but the whole world can see the pages you put there, right? So yes. It's scary. So it would be nice if all of And everybody can see what, what you did to the compiler too. I mean, if you can get over that, that you, that you, you're, you introduced that bug that, that <laughs> broke everybody in the world, or broke bootstrap for everybody in the world, That's you can good. get over making That's a change good. to the so website. I can feel powerful, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the broke Break, AIS, breaking the website is a lot mean. less, we're, uh, it, yes. has a lot but less but impact but than but breaking bootstrap the, for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is because we have to run the checker anyway, yes. and running the checker uh, uh, is not documented very well, uh, so everyone has to figure that out, right? I've, I've got to figure it out like every time. So you're, so you're volunteering it, like, to improve the it. documentation of the checker. Okay, that's no, good. It, it that, that's the first step. It would be nice if there was some more integrated way of updating the website. Yes, a lot of things yeah. would be nice, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But, but this is not There's a pony under here somewhere. But yes. this is not the kind of thing that isn't <laughs> solved yet. It's solved in at least a thousand different ways already. So. Yeah. I think it, it's easy to be flippant about what Sega was just saying, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's really key. The processes and the tools and the things that we have to work with yes. create barriers that yes. are stopping us creating good quality documentation, yes. which in turn is stopping people contributing to the compiler. Yes. And we can't solve as a community of people who contribute to the compiler, we can't easily solve wiki software that we don't understand, or hooks that we don't um, fully comprehend, or languages, HTML, that we don't really know what we're writing. We can just about hack on a compiler and do a great job of it. Then there are barriers to doing mm -hmm. the other side of our job. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't have anything specific to report. I can say that, that Carlos and I are working on ways to do a, a major revision to the website. I mean, hopefully that will make things easier. I, I agree that, it, that um, I mean, glibc, I think, is in a little bit better shape, even in its own use of the sourceware. And, and yeah, GCC is, um, I mean, you know, uh, un un unfortunately ha has bit rotted a lot. Yes. And then that's why, it, it, and I think that a, um, I mean, I, I, I personally bought and paying for, I mean, assuming that, you know, dot com prices don't go through the roof, but uh, you know, for GNU tools dot, dot org and you know, common a couple of domains where we can host, uh, you know, a, a better, uh, you know, single portal, which I think would also help that to not have this sort of random uh, collection of, of different sites and different web pages that, that doesn't give a holistic view to the GNU tool chain. So yeah, there is, I mean, it, and it's, you know, so, so yes, I'm, I mean, that's what, what I'm, trying to work on, um, and I just, you know, again, I guess to sort of wrap this up, that, it, you know, we have a really great technology that, uh, and a really great history, and to, if everybody can find ways to help uh, move that forward, advocate for it, and communicate that, uh, and find just little ways to help, um, and not be overwhelmed by all the problems. It's not a matter of asking any one person to solve everything. I mean, it's definitely a, a large amount of, of hurdles and efforts that we have, but if everybody can just work on one little piece of, you know, a, you know, volunteer, you know, an hour a month or something, we can, I think, make a great deal of change and improvement to, to make the GNU tool chain a, a much more accessible and, uh, you know, appreciated and, and inviting environment in which uh, we and uh, future developers, prospective developers could work. So thanks very much for all of your, your comments and feedback, and I uh, don't want to stand between you and lunch. Uh, bon appetit.